What is your name, please? My name is Kevin Dennis Lacey. Mr. Lacey, my name is Michael Watts. I'm a lawyer from San Antonio, Texas. Um, how long did you continue uh, in your capacity as the head of discipline drilling and completion for the Western Hemisphere? So I was in that role from July of 2006 until I fully left the role out of 1st of February 2008. Okay. And in February of 2008, what role did you assume at that point? The vice president of drilling completions for the Gulf of Mexico business unit for BP. Good afternoon, Mr. Lacey. Kerry Karras for BP. Based on all of the involvement that you had in the Gulf of Mexico in 2008, did you ever cut cost um, at the expense of safety? I did not. And did anyone in BP's management ever tell you to choose cost over safety in 2008? No, they did not. In 2009, as the VP of Drilling and Completions, did you ever sacrifice safety for cost? No, I did not. Did anyone in BP's management ever tell you to choose cost over safety in 2009? Not explicitly. Mr. Lacey, Michael Watts for the PSC again. When Mr. Terenz was transferred back home, you were told you were leaving the company. Right. Uh, did that cause you concern that the progress that you all had made in matters of safety might be interrupted or, or halted? It did cause me concern, and those were the concerns I attempted to register. Um, when, when I was informed at that point, that not only was Harry leaving and that my, um, my recommendations on the people to replace Harry had been overruled and uh, my intent to stay and now I was not going to be allowed to stay. The concerns that I registered is, as I, I believe I said yesterday, that the things we had put in place uh, may not be uh, continued uh, sustained, they were fragile, which I believe is the term I use. And if you have a safety problem, you bring in some hotshot QSE guy from Chevron to fix the Gulf of Mexico operations, and he works his tail off together with Harry Tierens and Curtis Jackson and achieves progress in safety, uh, were you concerned that if you eliminated that whole team that fixed the progress in the first place, that you might go back to where it was? with problems in process safety. Uh, I had that concern immediately when I understood I was not going to continue. At that time, I was not aware of the other changes as well. Uh, and when the safety leadership for Gulf of Mexico's drilling and completion is wiped out through a transfer or through a job elimination, does that send a message to the people that used to work under those people about priorities? It could send a number of messages, yes. Well, and in terms of these messages that could be sent, one message that had happened in 2008 and 2009 is that you received management directives from Andy Inglis and others that thou shall cut costs. That happened. That's fact. There were directives uh, from Neil Shaw, of which also were taken from Andy Inglis, yes. And from the time that you got there, we had already gone through these documents. In 2008, you all spent less money than you did in 2007, but increased production. That's correct. In 2009, you spent less money than you did in 2008 and dramatically increased production. Uh, we saved against plan. I, I don't know the absolute amount, so the spend could have been up because of more rigs, but your conclusion was we calculated that we saved uh, somewhere between 250 and $350 million on the 2009 program. Uh, and so this directive from management to save money led to a reduction in expenditures in 2009 alone of somewhere between 250 million and 300 million dollars in the Gulf of Mexico drilling and completion operations, right? That's my recollection, yes. Um, and the plan for 2010 was to continue to cut costs uh, relative to 2009. There, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure there were, you know, um, emails requesting that the original plan needed to be further reduced. In 2008 and 2009 while you were at BP, clearly you had received management directive to shed hundreds of millions of dollars of costs from the operations and drilling and completions in the Gulf of Mexico. Agree? I was assigned performance targets uh, that indicated we would have to save several hundred millions of dollars 
uh, in order for me to satisfactorily meet my performance targets. You had what was known as an IPC, which is a performance contract that set forth objectives or criteria where you would get exceptional performance, right? Uh, yes, we, they had instituted a, a tiered system where both the individual and the specific business unit uh, bonuses would be dependent on individual and business unit performance. And, and we're going to get to your separa separation agreement here in a minute, but I noticed that you did hit bonuses in 2008 and in 2009 uh, under your the, IPC contract. The, uh, I met um, all, uh, met or exceeded all targets. Sure. So in 2008 and again in 2009, you were given management directive through your performance contract that you needed to cut hundreds of millions of dollars of costs from the Gulf of Mexico drilling and completions budget, right? Th that was an agreed goal, yes. Uh, and you met that goal. You shed 250 to $300 million in costs between 2008 and 2009. In the, in the calendar year of 2009, that was my estimate. In that same calendar year, uh, we've already talked about documents that show that your production went up 54%. We had an exceptional delivery performance that year uh, in terms of production. Um, one of the ways that you increase production is to more successfully and quickly drill productive wells, right? Uh, the uh, more six, uh, in less days with less incidents. Um, when you said not explicitly, uh, there was pressure from the boardroom that you have talked about in your speeches to achieve more successful wells in less time. Agree? My reference when I said boardroom was forward-looking and, and taken in the context of all boardrooms are looking to achieve that. Sure, but I want to talk about BP's boardroom. Yes. What caused your six-second pause in the words, not explicitly? Um, I was never given a directive to uh, to cut corners or to deliver something not safely, but there was tremendous pressure on cost. All right, and let's visit about that for a second. That tremendous pressure on cost was a tremendous pressure to reduce costs. That's right? correct. Uh, that tremendous pressure on cost reduction existed in 2008 while you were at BP. In in all years, but it was particularly acute in the latter part of. 2008 in the first half of 2009. Uh, and it continued through the second half of 2009 in the planning for 2010, that there were going to be further cost reductions. The, uh, I believe I, I stated earlier, initial business plans, um, as is often the case, were sent back for revisions and further reductions. Um, and when you say further reductions, that meant greater cost reductions. Um, yeah. Yes, that's correct. 